All right, welcome to a brand new video. In this one, we're doing a street photography POV at the CNE. And I am so excited for this. We got the GoPro mounted on my chest. Today's camera is gonna be the Sony a7 IV with the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens. And this is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. I've been shooting street photography in the city now for years. And I've actually never gotten the chance to finally get some photos of the CNE. So same thing as usual, we're gonna walk around, capture some BTS with the GoPro, see what we can get and voice over a little bit of my thoughts, tips and tricks, uh, things that I'm looking for so that you can hopefully take some things away. And if you have a carnival or something crazy going on where you're at, then you can uh, hopefully get better and apply some things you learn or see in today's video to your photography. So with that, let's jump on into things. All right, so kicking things off at uh, the beginning of the CNE, I'm not gonna lie to you, a lot of these beginning photos were in fact what I call like warm up shots. They weren't the craziest thing, but they were more just practice for me to figure out how people are moving around, uh, what's going on in the area, what stories am I able to tell. And so I knew immediately that it was gonna be difficult uh, to get the photos I wanted just because of how many people were actually there. So the number one thing that I try to do when I'm actually making my photography is singling out subjects and individual stories. And so there's a few themes that I was actually able to parse out as I was editing these photos um, that led me to realize what the photo sets are that I wanna make. And so that first theme is like almost like romantic moments, <laughs> like this couple here. Um, I know it sounds kind of funny, but candid street portraiture is not only the hardest, but the most rewarding thing you can do uh, with street photography. And this initial photo with like all these stuffed animals and the Ferris wheel and whatever are like, the, is the thing that set the scene for me to realize like where I want my subjects to actually be placed. So I realized there are a ton of couples at the CNE that are looking to win a prize and give it to their partner or just like maybe some guys that are looking to show off that they can actually win something. And so I was like, okay, that's gonna be the story and the subject that I'm gonna seek out because amongst this massive sea of people, I have to have a goal, like a story that I wanna find. Otherwise, there's just so many things going on, you're not gonna find it. So that was a mindset I had going into this. And even with those first few ambience shots, like I knew it was gonna be possible given all of the different games and uh, food vendors that were there. And so like a shot like this with a couple walking ahead or there's couples getting portraiture, like character, caricatures done. Like that was the kind of stuff that I was like, okay, cool. Like this is gonna be like a fun night if I can figure out how to get that. And this shot coming up was probably my favorite photo of the night. It was exactly what I wanted. This couple like laughing and having fun, taking photos uh, while they were eating. And that was like, almost like the hero photo for me for the evening. So as I'm building a photo carousel of the CNE and e uh, to post on Instagram, I knew that that was gonna be a, definitely like a critical piece uh, of that carousel. And so the next photos that come about are almost built around that. And so the photos that I'm then looking for is in the next theme, which is like these ambience uh, or ambient photos or atmospheric photos, like things like buildings, structures, different areas around the CE, and uh, maybe some additional couple photos that aren't as uh, candid, like this shot of the couple walking ahead. Um, but it's really more about inanimate objects and sort of what the environment is around uh, the stories that I'm capturing. So these, uh, this like area with the lanterns and uh, cherry blossoms caught my eye. I tried grabbing some photos of these lanterns, but it didn't really work out. I had to double check that these uh, cherry blossoms also were plastic because you just never know. Got the Charmander as well because you know I like the fire Pokemon <laughs> of all the Pokemon and then as the sun was coming down I was like cool we can start messing around with some lighting now so this ride here I tried capturing the angles really didn't work out and then I managed to grab some other cool ones like of the slide some couples around having like funnel cake around this area but it was really just about capturing the rides and figuring out what of the rides and the compositions that the rides are in that I could include in the photo carousel. And that led me to the atmospheric photos I wanted to capture. So this one of the spinning swing, so this one of the spinning swing set is probably one of my favorites. I love the layers in it. 
and how I was able to edit the sky, the couple walking in front of the slide, and then obviously just like isolating for some more minimal compositions with the drop tower are always really cool ways to show off like a carnival or a fair or something that uh, is, you know, happening around you. So I wanted to get a little farther back though and capture this spinning ride a little bit better. I remember playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. I think they called it like a scrambled eggs ride, but I was mad and I was able to capture that couple uh, riding along. Uh, I just sort of like waiting for it to end. And I thought that was kind of cool again with just how the compression worked out with my 70 millimeter. Other photos of the rides I was looking around for, other environmental shots like this one with the CN Tower looking down onto the uh, fair was another thing that I thought would be kind of cool, creating some more depth with this ride and the Ferris wheel. Didn't really work though uh, while I was in this area, what I was trying to do, it just the photos didn't really come together. They were just kind of like all okay. And then as I was walking, there was this couple having a conversation. Uh, she had her hands on her hips, so it kind of caught my eye uh, just because I thought it might be like an interesting shot. I kind of like the way that the, the hot dog stand looked though too, and that was why I in inevitably grabbed that photo. And then uh, BMO Field to me is also really cool. I've actually never been outside of it at this time of day. So I was able to grab some cool shots of that. I've only ever been inside TFC Stadium while the game's playing. And then it's dark afterwards, like, you know, once, once it's over. So you miss cool photo opportunities. Um, and as the sun basically continued to come down, it led me to sort of figure out this third theme uh, that emerged, which I knew it was going to happen as I was going to the CNE is probably pri one of the primary reasons why I was actually going. But that was to figure out how to get creative with the ambient lighting going on in the area. So, you know, I learned how the flow of people was working out and then just figuring out how the lighting actually interacted with the people walking and how I could take advantage of my mist filter and get a little bit more glow inhalation in my photos using that. So a lot of these shots are just me taking photos of the stands, what was going on, trying to get creative with the characters that were like trying to sell stuff and bringing that all together to make a photo set. And it's always been one of my goals to make a photo set at a carnival. I had one earlier this year in Burlington that I just brought my camera to, uh, to take some photos, but I knew I wanted to get creative with a POV video and that's why I put this one together for you. So with that, that's kind of the tips and tricks portion that I was thinking about uh, as I was making today's video. I was like, what are the bigger themes that I can talk about? What are things that you can take away uh, to level up your own photos and learn from? And I would just say the biggest one is learn your environment first, figure out the stories you wanna tell, take additional photos of the atmosphere that help tell those stories better, and then get creative. Figure out what uh, elements of the area are actually speaking to you. A lot of my photography revolves around lighting uh, and light in particular, and that's naturally just what I gravitate to. So if it's maybe, you know, symmetry for you or depth of field, like figure out where that is in your environment that you're taking your photos in and uh, bring it to life. So I hope you enjoyed today's POV. I know I did, this was a lot of fun to shoot. And if there's anything you want me to talk about or showcase in the next one, be sure to comment down below. I'm always happy to make more videos and get a little bit more curated to what you wanna see. And yeah, happy to uh, be back on YouTube. So with that, I hope to see you all in the next one and thanks for watching.